I appreciate it. <laughs> Did anyone uh, complete it or close to completion? The first two jobs done. Oh, okay. What, what were the problems for, for the last one? Describe mathematically. Describe mathematically. Well, I, I, I'm aware of the problem, but what, uh, what, was, uh, what was the challenge in, uh, uh, in doing it? Just, you know, you have this chart of uh, equations, and th th there are equations to convert three trigonometric function of sum of arguments into product, right? Or if you add together two trigonometric functions, how to convert it into product, right? So uh, you just try practice for uh, getting the standing wave. You, you're having summation of cosine of one thing plus cosine of, the, of another thing, and uh, well, that depends on both the position and uh, the point. So you may want to convert it into one position that will depend only on position, and another uh, that will depend on another trigonometric function only of time. Right? And then you remove uh, time part, take only the position part, so that uh, it must be zero. You know, sine is zero, zero pi ten pi. So if it is sine, it will be like pi over two and and if uh, if I did some <coughs> traps, it can be phase shift. But it's also you can shift the coordinate axis to select left and right. It's a general idea, but you can work in, in details with the analysis. So we are starting chapter number two. I will try to make sure everything before this line is uh, what we did here with this uh, class and everything which is not covered are recording from the last year. For some reason, we have uh, missed it. Uh, uh, so, this is your favorite thing, right? So, you need to add these two signs together, and there are equations how to convert uh, sum into product. Just try it. Um, I'm going to offer next homework uh, within Friday. So there is a little overlap, and I will try to avoid it in, in the future. So, but we are trying to make maybe a little more more relaxed uh, at the end. And, uh, here, it's not a secret. I mean, you need heads up. So. Uh, if you, this is this will be very complementary to what the what we are going to do in this chapter, and if you want to prepare for it or look uh, forward to your tools of experience and, and notes or maybe Wikipedia, look for Fourier transforms. So if you are not aware, if you are hearing it for the first time, you can just look into Wikipedia if you. Met it in some kind of first and second doesn't require. So, who we are and what are we doing? So, we are in physical chemistry class, but we are not doing actual wet web physical chemistry. We are dealing with characterization of uh, multi and materials in theory. We are looking for background of uh, things that come out of. Lead from the idea that elephants move so quickly that they hold weight measure, and we need some questions to describe that. 
by now you are masters of execution. You do have uh, prescriptions, which components to add, how to, uh, how to convert the wave function of a lectern in the past into a function of the electron in, in the future. And you do have uh, uh, awareness and knowledge of some fundamentals of this theory. So the goal is to predict outcome of instrumental measurement of properties for, for some real molecules and materials. But we should uh, realize that it is not easy. If it will be so easy, then uh, probably there will be no department of chemistry. There will be only department of engineering. The whole problem will be solved. So <clears throat> we are holding this uh, goal, but we are approaching it slowly but surely. And as a first step, um, please do not be discouraged, but we will consider some very much oversimplified models. So we will go to practical applications of the skills and uh, fundamental knowledge that we already covered, but it will be, we will not look at the benzene molecule for on today or next meeting, or, and then a couple of weeks from, oh, for a long time, no. We will look for something really oversimplified. You cannot, if uh, you were not taken um, quantum theory before, you cannot imagine how simple I was. So Im imagine what can be simpler than a molecule or simpler than an electron. Huh? Just an electron? Where? What? Where? In a box? Great, I see your exposure to quantum theory. It's good. Uh, yes, it is favorite uh, and famous problem to practice quantum theory on electron in the box. That's good. <laughs> but we can be simpler. We can go even simpler. So one uh, idea that you have implicitly contributed that we are dealing with Maybe I also uh, try to follow this approximation. We are dealing with only one electron. In fact, there is only one, uh, well, there is hydrogen atom and maybe like lithium uh, doubly uh, ionized, where an atom has only one electron. In all other systems, there are abundance of them, and electrons can collide with each other. We will not cover in this course how we will try to interact with each other. So we will try to avoid the, their collision as much as possible and just look how electrons respond to the external field, which can be a field of attractive ions. Attractive, not that they're so pretty, but that they attract electrons. And uh, maybe something oversimplified models like uh, box. But I did ask a question. One electron were. Why did I ask? There, there is a fundamental reason. So, um, word, not word. But uh, electron in which environment? So, uh, to, to practice the equations that we went through, one needs to know a greater energy that consists of potential and kinetic. And potential energy is uh, literally who attracts my electron or who repels it. So it's potential profile. And it, it, uh, depending on where we place our electron, the potential energy will be different. Okay? Well, question not to the knowledge. What is the simplest potential? Yes, exactly. So simplest potential is absence of potential. Okay. So Hamiltonian, where we do not have kinetic energy, or we, we always have, where we do have kinetic and have no potential. So in which 
circumstances, we experience no potential energy there. Our poor health experiences potential energy. In free space? Yes, in space. So we will be space explorers from now on. Free space. Well, of course, to survive the mathematical uh, hardness of these problems, we, we will not go into true three dimensional space. We will go into one dimensional space. One dimensional space, which has only one angle. So it will be imagined well. Uh, Imaginary is fantasy, science fiction, a world, a universe that contains only one electron. There are no other objects, no planets, no stars, no ions, no other electrons, just one electron is traveling in a free space. Okay. But we are going to put some uh, mathematical foundations and get comfortable with predicting what this electron can do. And it will be not super trivial. There, there will be some, some uh, fine points. Okay? So uh, this will be, I don't know, for three meetings, at least, maybe, maybe more. But, uh, we, we will solve this problem with all, uh, or not all, but substantial amount of rigor. And then we will try to keep the same level for other problems. That's the stuff that you know, right? Ways to, to predict the future. So uh, the last way that we learned uh, last time is that we look at the past initial condition for wave function at time zero at all points of space. There is a protocol to get it in the, in the future, right? And uh, we need to find eigenfunctions, eigenenergies. And we need to find projections of uh, the initial condition onto the eigenfunctions. Right? Nothing we did that in the first time. So we mini go the mini purpose, mini aim that we need to uh, pursue is to see how can we practice this protocol for electron in the free space. So uh, we will use our scientific intuition to guess for initial condition, and then we use this protocol to predict future. Do you agree that it is boring? Maybe helpful, but, but, but somewhat boring. So before, uh, before we go to mathematical details, we may want to uh, set up the scientific goals. Like, are we going to learn something new out of this um, exercise? So we, we need to have something pleasant and interesting. Otherwise, uh, there is no reward and no pressure that will make us to invest three meetings to, to do it. So what, what are you Intuitive expectations. What else in this case? Move. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How? In a wave. Huh? In a wave. In? Oh, you say like a wave? Like a wave. Oh, yes, yes. It, it is a wave. We, we, uh, since no one was protesting against the equations, now it is accepted. Yes, it will, it will be a wave. But. Um, there, uh, there, is, there is a trivial solution when we can just take our electronic wave and spread it over infinite space so that it will not move, it will just occupy everything with a very little probability density. It will be somewhat boring. And uh, 
hard to find practical connections. It would be more interesting if we, for example, take hydrogen atom and then suddenly steal the proton so that electron doesn't notice it. <laughs> I'm not teaching you anything, but it's just only, only uh, thought. Um, well, there, there are some uh, more respectful ways to consider localized electrons. Maybe an electronic gun that injects electron in some localized space. But uh, if we know that electron can be at one point, it's always, always distributed, but we can make it like semi-local. We can have it distributed around the vicinity of some point. Like around, uh, if it was S state of electron in hydrogen atom, where we stole the proton, at the initial time, it will be holding the same space, right? Maximum near the place where former ion was staying and less and less as you go away. And then we can step aside and see what would happen with it. So, any ideas? If you just took the electron away? I mean, if the you proton you away? Proton away, yes. So proton was holding electron distribution near the center because it was attracted. Now we remove this attraction center. What would happen? It's just kind of like go anywhere. And like, are we still saying like it's in a box? No, no box. Infinite oh. space. We would go anywhere, like uh, like the speed of thought go left or right, or it would uh, like equivalent to scattering with directions. Yes, so it will. Hmm? It's a big square. Yes, it will, it will uh, get lower and lower. So the next one is the wrong word concentration. Lower and lower density in each uh, vicinity. So it was localized and then it will start delocalized, spreading out. Um, if I take uh, maybe or shower gel and try to make a fire in it, it will not hold for a long time. Start to spread. I, I, it's an uh, invention of last second. I never heard a comparison for that. <clears throat> what if our original uh, hydrogen atom, before we have stolen the proton, was moving? Was, was having non-zero velocity. Means the electronic distribution was also moving. So, okay. Now we, we steal the problem. What would happen with this distribution? Would it suddenly stop? Won't the cloud just keep expanding? It's keep know? expanding, but where the center of the cloud would be? Okay. It keeps moving, yes. So, uh, without any boring math, you already have, uh, you cannot call it answer, but you can call it um, educated guess, scientific hypothesis, that uh, uh, localized electronic cloud will continue to move according to initial average velocity, and the width of this distribution will continue to increase. So there are two statements that are hypothetical statements that we want to prove right or wrong. So it's our scientific formulation. And our methodology, our tool to address this uh, scientific question will be to practice uh, the expansion of initial state over eigenstate. Well, there are several unknown things, but we'll make them known. We will we'll go through it. So um, I do not have slide on it, but you may uh, summarize what is our goal, so that if you, so you, you have a general idea what we're doing. I can try. Um, how to steal a proton? <laughs> um, Oh, uh, nice. D 
Ими стоит function with a function limit a. Move according to momentum, initial momentum, and B will uh, increase. Which money are used in Europe? Huh? Um, the euro. Since when? What were the money in Germany before that? Frank. No. In France. Huh? In France. Um, marks. Uh huh. So, uh, what? Which pictures are shown on uh, American currency? Presidents. Presidents. So, who are shown on the who were shown on the German currency? And like mathematicians and stuff like that. Right. Like scientists. Yes. Yes. Germany Marx. <coughs> Gauss. And uh, you are aware of Gaussian function, right? There were no Nobel Prize at, at the time when he was alive, uh, therefore he didn't get it. So it's what one can put on, on money. Portraits of scientists, equations, and, and, and uh, uh, curvatures. And uh, probably the, the best familiarity with Gaussian distribution is um, in, when in freshman quarters one is getting trading on a curve. By, by some reason, uh, in, in a large amount of large classes, there is this to Why don't we assume something similar between large classes and electron? Electron can be localized also according to Gaussian function. It's not uh, that we love these functions so, so much, but uh, it is hard to design a function that will correspond to localization of something in the, in the vicinity of something. It's just good mathematical uh, equation for shape, right? So this exponential with uh, minus square function in the, in the power, right? This could be a good guess for a stolen protein, for uh, electron that is localized in the vicinity of something. We, we need initial condition, initial distribution of electron. And we can assume also as our hypothesis number three. At time zero, uh, our wave function has a Gaussian shape. Um, <coughs> one cannot do everything according to the rules and rigorously. One, one needs uh, to use scientific intuition and, and guess something. There is a factor as a two reference. So we will believe we'll start to believe that our electron was localized in the center. That's So <clears throat> this is summary of one of our common hypotheses that if we can process this distribution with two parameters, this average position, x naught. We can assume that this, uh, if we are away from time zero, it will be not x naught, but x depending on t. At time equal zero, it will be a zero, and then it may shift somewhere. And one of our hypotheses is that uh, the center of the distribution will continue motion according to initial velocity. Right? 
So if you, if you know the momentum, the momentum divided by mass is the obvious distribution, we can tell that uh, the position will be initial position plus this uh, velocity times uh, time passed since the beginning of the experiment. Right? So could you, could you If you can get such uh, equation as an answer for mathematical exercises, if if you will find it, it will it will be happy. If if, it, if anyone can be happy, we will look at mathematical equation. Um, so we can sketch a plan how to address. How to prove uh, our hypothesis right or wrong? How we can practice our third way to predict future in application to uh, fantasy universe with single alpha in one dimension? I hope it was not for this. It's boring much. So we do need to um, solve time independent training equation to get to the uh, eigen functions and eigen energies, right? We are, we are going to practice so this is kind of clear and it goes uh, along with um, what we discussed before so this part is uh, literally reproduction of what we did in, in uh, on monday in class and in order to practice this uh, schedule, we need to throw in the initial condition, which is our free rules uh, design. Initial condition, which will be Gaussian. And as a last step, you will need to uh, make a convolution between uh, eigenstates of Hamiltonian and initial condition. Do not feel irritation, do not protest, I'll, I'll come to this again. Um, in order to practice third way to predict future, we need to project initial condition onto eigenstates, right? Multiply initial condition times second function and make integration to get this C sub K coefficient, right? So we, we, we will do it. Now initial condition will be Gaussian function. So before we go through this plan, we will need to formulate Hamiltonian that doesn't have potential energy, positive kinetic energy, and this will be <coughs> really easy. So the, the whole part will be doable and easy if we uh, introduce and discuss concepts of uh, plane wave, which we kind of touched before. Right? And uh, momentum operator, which is the only equation that uh, we need to discuss. All others can be done. What is a plane wave? And why plane wave is plane? Would it be a wave that exists solely on a two dimensional plane? I see logic in your guess. <clears throat> 
Twin wave is best defined in three in three dimensions, but we are going to apply it to one dimension. Uh, why this twin wave? And you may have heard about this concept in other courses or you will, especially if you will take uh, electricity in physics, which maybe you are not looking for, but uh, it is a part a part there. So if you have a um, like electromagnetic wave, radio wave propagating from the cell phone to the uh, antenna, you have oscillations of electric field up and down, and it goes to the same phase, same uh, value of this electric field at a plane. It propagates forward and then, then it changes. So there, there is a, um, who was not throwing stones in the water? Everyone did, right? What do you see? Ripples. Uh, what, what are the shapes of them? So it will be a circular wave. So if you have one, one wave distributing, departing from point where of, of you're aiming, uh, where you uh, place your stone, it will be like wave of the same shape distributing away and keeping the same shape at, at a given uh, distance from the center. So it will be circular. If you make um, I don't know the explosion in space, there will be everything will be distributed in a spherical way from the point of explosion. So the front of a shock wave of a wave will distribute as a as a sphere. But if we are very far away from the center, emitting center then the spherical wave can be considered as a just chunk of a little plane. Right? So plane wave is because it is a uh, region of space of the same phase, where the wave, sh wave shape keeps the same shape at each point on this, uh, on this plane. Plane wave, if, if it just distributes where wave front is. Um, if we are speaking about one dimensional element, we do not have planes. Instead of plane, uh, like for three dimensional space, plane wave is in two dimensions. Plane. For two dimensional space, plane wave, a plane, for this plane will be a line, one dimension. For one dimensional space, uh, area of uh, the same phase will be a point traveling point. If you have the running wave, you just sit on the top of a hump and observe how you travel. So it will be like, instead of plane, it will be just a point. <coughs> but what is uh, called Is uh, we think that we already agreed to uh, to deal with. So it is a exponential wave because we know that uh, nature of uh, electronic wave, uh, you know, wave function gets to between real and imaginary part. It needs to be complex. Therefore, instead of science, and science will be exponential. And in the argument. We have uh, both space and, and time uh, accumulation of space, right? <clears throat> In more, so it is a general solution for uh, uh, wave function. 
in a more narrow sense, one can call plane waves the same uh, equation without spatial part. So uh, it is. So it is a set of fringes of the same uh, amplitude distributed equivalently among all space from plus to minus infinity. Uh, it's in the way, so it's a plus or a minus i to the sine px over h. So when it says cosine px over h bar, is it plus or minus i again? I understand your question. Understand where it comes from, and the answer is very good. Why? Because um, momentum can be oriented left or right. So it, it's a uh, um, question of, of, of convention. We can agree it's with minus one. But later on, we will make integration over different values of momentum. We will uh, take add together plane waves corresponding to different uh, wavelengths, different uh, momentum, different density of fringes. And we will consider both positive and negative momentum. So it, uh, it, if we have it only positive or only negative, we will not reproduce all uh, multitude of, of phenomena. We need to uh, agree that a wave can travel in opposite directions. What is this uh, square root of 10? It's a um, declaration of my reasons. So I do not want to go into details, and um, therefore I cannot request it from you. Anytime you write a wave function, you may want to uh, assume and believe and hope that it is orthogonal and orthonormal. So that if you multiply two wave functions and integrate, you get either zero or one. So sometimes through procedure of numerical or analytical solution, you can get more than one. And it will be bad, then all our theorems will fail. So we always need to do so-called normalization procedure to divide wave function by such number so that upon practicing orthogonalization Procedure, we will get either zero or one. And uh, this is the normalization factor that you make sure that it is maintained. In some problems, we will literally find this factor. In most cases, it is constant. In some crazy cases, it uh, changes with either time or space. But, uh, if you tell normalization in public on some exam, no one will tell that you are wrong. Okay, so plane wave. The large momentum means there are dense fringes. Low momentum means there, there are sparse. I'm going to go not forward but backwards to check if I'm dealing well with uh, okay plane wave concept. Now I need to go to momentum plane. Uh, we got through. It is what we were discussing that if you localize it at the beginning, then it will start to expand. Okay, we need momentum operator. What is it? Am I right or wrong? I want to be with the time for that. But uh, please try to catch me on errors and I will try to make notice and give you credits. So to
beneficial for the community. I will not, I, I promise not to make intentional mistakes. For real. So, momentum operator is derivative of space. Anyone uh, has protest against it? Or when we discussed it a couple, uh, last week, it was okay. So through this ideas of accumulation phase, we guessed uh, we, we, that uh, there is an exponential, this, uh, this power. If you want to extract momentum out of such exponential, you need to take the root of over, over space. Then you really want to take care of our properties. So I'm going to repeat in, in uh, once again a thing that I, I was doing about a week ago. So we do have momentum, and we need to have a frame of If I was wrong with this minus you uh, discovered in so let's practice applying the the framework. What happens if you p minus p five So uh, all factors go to the front. Derivative of exponential is the same exponential. And everything except uh, independent primary is able to use another factor of front. Minus i g over h bar. Right? No errors and calculus. Yeah. Okay. Now we do have a couple of cancellations. So H bar cancels. Minus times minus will be plus one. And I times I will be minus one. So probably I was uh, it, it was not the best idea to, to put minus. If if I would, uh, if you would put uh, plus right away, you don't see here. Then we wouldn't have uh, minus in here. But what we see, I'm not going to correct uh, this error right now. But what, what did you see? That it will, uh, we will reproduce the sign minus p minus p times uh, wave function itself. You see it? No? So, this P is head acting on the um, plane wave is just a derivative with some taking care of factors. And if we cancel factors and combine them uh, together, we can recognize, we can recognize that it will be P same same function by itself. So here is how we define it. And here what we put upon applying the operator to this function. Oh, yes. 
So applying what you already know, P to this, okay? you get value of the momentum to without head times the same function. And this minus sign is just now punishment for having minus here. I, I don't want to go quickly and remove it, otherwise it will be too much mess. But acting by momentum operator on a plane wave, you are reproducing the plane wave again. This value of momentum on the front. How do we verbally represent it? How do we uh, describe it? More momentum operator and plane wave functions are in relations. The plane wave function is an eigenfunction of momentum operator. So this is an example of eigenvalue problem. So it is not the uh, time independent Schrodinger equation. It is not for Hamiltonian, but it is similar mathematical nature of a problem. So by if we um, here we did reverse engineering. We plugged in solution and fu uh, function and suddenly found that it is solution. But formally, one could start from making this as an initial question: that which wave function would satisfy would be eigenstate of this operator? And the answer is any plane wave. Any plane wave is I again function of momentum operator. Momentum wave here okay. This is what we are going to get at the end of, uh, of the week. And uh, here is a repetition once again of our plan. So we are going to plug in wave functions and energies, and we are going to find the expansion coefficients. I think uh, time is, there are two minutes more, but uh, it will be not right to, to rush. We better. Uh, prepare ourselves to, to do it slowly but surely next time. So once again, where, where we are and what are we doing? We are checking the hypothesis that uh, hydrogen atom is stolen proton. We will keep moving forward and expanding. Therefore, we guessing Gaussian wave function as initial condition. And in order to practice third wave in the future, we are um, pumping our mathematical muscles by concepts of plane wave and uh, which operator? Moment. So when we meet next time uh, in class on Friday, we will uh, uh, try to solve time independent training equation the space and plug stuff in things into the third wave to the future. Um, this evening, I will help to whoever needs help with uh, homework number one, and we will continue getting over basic skills of using methods of play. It will be needed. You, you will see how hard some mathematical problems is, and we will solve them with uh, computational tools. One far goal and close goal. In about two weeks, we will make another set of presentations where. You get, we will split all basic skills of operating matter software and you one by one will present. And now, uh, evening to prepare this. Uh, let me come to the other slide. Yes. Meeting is done. Dismissed. Uh, uh, see you at five.